Uh, here I am with the delightful Marie Pierre Purcell, who is a member of Kuru de Bera, a super group that I first heard many, many years ago in the Cathedral Reparate in the, uh, the deepest jungle of Nice, uh, the old town. It was super. <laughs> it's an a cappella group, and I have caught up with them recently, and I'm delighted to say that Marie Pierre is, in fact, a member of that group. So let us say hello to Marie. Hello. Hello. Hello, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it, it, this is an a cappella group, and it draws uh, from many, many singers, uh, but it tends to tour with about four. Hey, can, you, can you, Marie, tell me a bit of the history behind the group? Yes, of course. So, uh, you know, it started um, very simply. In the beginning, it was uh, maybe... Uh, uh, 30 years ago, 36 years ago, there were people, um, maybe 10 people, and uh, they got together um, about once a week to, to sing the songs they liked, only to do that. And uh, they were uh, led by the pleasure to, to share these songs, to, to share the local repertoire. So um, they sang the songs they heard from their families, from uh, the friends, uh, in uh, all kinds of uh, uh, festive situations, uh, after um, at the end of lunches, for example, and uh, they really loved them because they were part of the lives, and uh, they started singing very spontaneously. But at a point, they figured out that uh, they didn't didn't know the the traditional way of singing because here. Uh, in the Southern Alps, there's um, a tradition for uh, the polyphony. And uh, in fact, you know, there, there are three voices for a, a cappella song. The first one is the main singing, the melody. Uh, the second voice is uh, like a kind of a counter singing, un contrechamp, la tierce. We call it la tierce in French. And there is um, the third voice, the bass voice, like the foundation of the song. And those people really wanted to bring uh, uh, this tradition of uh, vocal polyphony back to life. So um, to get closer to th this way of singing, singing, they called in um, a professional musician, Michel Bianco. And uh, over the following years, they worked together to to plant the roots <laughs> uh, in the traditional musics and that's how the the story began is it unique is the group unique to the region i think it's unique you know there is a, a french journalist um his name is franck tenaille oh. and uh, he found he wrote something about that he, he wrote that uh, le courroux de Ber had succeeded in creating la courroux de Ber a touch <laughs> yeah. it, it it means everything um and of course it, it means that uh, that music this music is unique because the band um the band has an approach uh, that hasn't been easy to stick to uh you know, it's easier to do something very traditional in a very traditional way. It's easier than to evolve towards um, a new style between tradition and uh, renewal, between between the past and and uh, and um, and the modernity. Yeah. And and it it is what the group did, and it has an effect on the global sound on the global style. Uh, on the way of singing um, and on the way you engage yourself in your singing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, so it leads me on to the question of where do the songs come from? Alors, uh, the songs, uh, as I told you initially, uh, uh, the choir worked uh, with uh, the best known local repertoire. So they sang the most popular songs. They sang uh, those that uh, were sung at the end of lunches with the family, the friends. And, um, uh, you know, it's uh, 
there are songs like uh, Quel Mazzolin di Fiori, uh, Italian songs, very, very famous, or Nisa La Bella, uh, those kinds of uh, songs. But um, little by little, they added more sophisticated songs because uh, the choir attracted a lot of interest. And some people from the audience uh, came to sing them uh, lesser known uh, songs uh, because they felt that their culture was about to be forgotten and it made them very sad um, because they had they had learned these songs from uh, their grandpa grandma and it, they were part of the history the, the story the life story so they were very sad uh, to see those songs uh, to, to, they were afraid that they could be forgotten and uh, later Le Coro de Berre uh, wrote uh, its own songs because uh, all around the group there were uh, local poets. Uh, oh. They were able to write in uh, Niçois, in the language, in the local language. And uh, for example, Miss Michel Bianco knew very well uh, Serge Doty. He, he was an extraordinary uh, lyricist. Uh, some songs. Uh, have also been added to the repertoire thanks to collaborations. Uh, in particular, there's a tribute to uh, Bob Dylan, a Bob Dylan song. I sent you a video yeah. last night. Yes. <laughs> Blowing in the wind, yeah. And uh, it's a result of um, a collaboration with uh, an Italian uh, composer. There are also uh, uh, musical adventures like uh, Dogora, Dogora is the work of a French composer. His name was uh, Etienne Perruchon, and uh, it's a masterpiece uh, written in Dogorien. Alors, le Dogorien is a language, um, is an imaginary language from people living in another planet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. That's nice. Can, can can you tell me because we're we're moving on time wise? Can you tell me are the singers professional? Uh, alors, at the beginning, you know, it was a very large choir. Uh, there were about uh, thirty singers, uh -huh. uh, and uh, that number gradually uh, dwindled uh, as they had to to work faster. Uh, oh. faster and faster the band was success successful uh, there were more and more concerts and um alors, there were more and more concerts because in the 80s it, it was quite unusual to have uh, young people uh, singing in a uh, regional uh, language so um uh, they attracted uh, a lot of uh, attention and uh, there were more and more uh, proposals and uh it was uh, it was important it was uh necessary to 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 um to create a, a small team that will be available to do all the concerts mm -hmm. and that will be able to work uh, quickly to to read the music uh and most of the choristers uh, couldn't read music it was a real problem and uh, sometimes they had to learn in a very short space oh. of time. They had to learn new songs. And even if they were all highly motivated, it was no longer enough. So mm. at a point, uh, Le Coro de Berre became a team of uh, six to four professional singers. And currently we are four singers, two men and uh, two women. And amazing you are. Now, where can we where can we hear some of your music? Alors, uh, you can hear la musique, the music of Le Coro de Berre on the band's website, corodebera.com. Uh, you can listen to this music on YouTube, on uh, streaming platforms. Uh, you can subscribe to its Facebook account too, because sometimes we post uh, videos of the lives, lives of performances. So, yeah. So I'd encourage everybody to have a look at gurudebera.com, the website, because there you'll find out <laughs> where, where they are, what they're doing. And uh, 
it's, it's sensational to hear them. It's very, uh, it's inspirational and uplifting. That's how I find their music. So it's time to say thank you so, so much, Marie Pierre, <laughs> for this lovely interview. No, I really, really appreciate it. So all we do is uh, thank you and merci beaucoup and, uh, and see you soon. And uh, thank you so much. And we will leave it with a laugh like we started. <laughs> well, I find the off button. <laughs> thank you so much, Marie. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye.